As we begin looking at our next section of study in Algebra 2, we're going to be dealing with quadratic functions and quadratic equations. And to begin this, we need a list of vocabulary. So the first is the parabola. Now, a parabola is the name of the graph of a quadratic function. These are a U-shaped graph, and if certain characteristics are in play, they will open up. If other characteristics are in play, they will open down. Now, the quadratic function is any function that can be written in the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not zero. So our highest exponent needs to be a squared value, and then we are working with quadratic functions. Now, a lot of people will take some time to build different rules, different ideas surrounding how to graph quadratic functions. And by simply building a table of values following your order of operations, you can do quite well. But with certain characteristics in play that we will discuss in this video, there are some general rules that can be taken into effect. And most of it, actually all of it, has to deal with finding this A value. So a general quadratic table is as follows. If our x value is negative 2 and we're dealing with simple 1x squared, negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. You can see we have a set of symmetry in this function that around a certain point the output values in our range are the same on either side for our function. So as we move through, what's going to happen as our a value changes? So if a is 2, we still plug in the negative 2 for x, we square it and get positive 4, and then 4 times 2 will give us 8. If we plug in a negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Plug in 0, 0 squared is 0, times 2 is still 0. Plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2. Plug in 2, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. So you end up with the same symmetry, just all of our original output values have been doubled because that a value was a 2. What happens if a is negative 3? So again, we plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 3 is a negative 12. Plug in negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Plug in 0, we'll get 0, of course. Plug in 1. 1 squared is 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 3 is a negative 12. You notice this one still has the symmetry that existed previously, but everything is going down. That is because our a value is negative. If the a value is negative, a parabola will open down. It will have more of an n shape. If our a value is positive, it will open up and it will have more of a u shape. So this is a less than 0 and a greater than 0. So in general, what happens? We are going to take our x value and square it. So our standard feature is the red column, the first column. So we're going to get 4 times a, 1 times a, 0 times a, 1 times a, and 4 times a again. So if you can memorize just 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and then be able to multiply those numbers by whatever a is, you will be able to find your points very quickly based on the center. Now the center of a quadratic function is called the vertex. And a form that we're going to learn with this lesson is called the vertex form. You, what was written previously was the standard form. We will discuss that in a lesson. But the vertex form is written as such that f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where our vertex is located at the point h, k.
Now the A value will take whatever is inside of that grouping symbol, inside of the parentheses, after it's been squared and multiply it by itself. So if x minus h is 1, you're going to follow the behavior of what was on the general table before for 1 squared. If what's inside those parentheses is 3, then you square 3 and multiply it by a, and you will get your form. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a graph here and write the equation for it. We're going to start with an imaginary line that exists in all quadratic functions called the axis of symmetry. And what the axis of symmetry is, it's a vertical line that passes through our graph in such a way that the items on either side are symmetric. It acts as a mirror line. And the axis of symmetry here would be located on this dotted line. So that dotted line is located at x equals 3. Interesting though, our vertex is also located on the axis of symmetry, and this is by design. The at vertex is the point that does not have a symmetric point, so it has to be on that axis. So now we will find the location of that vertex. Our vertex is a point, and it's located at 3, in this case, negative 1. So if we were to write an equation for the graph that is shown here, we have most of the parts we are simply missing a. But let's put in what we do have. We have here f of x equals some a value, which we will look at in a minute, times x minus 3 squared minus 1. And the minus 3 came from the fact that it's x minus h, and h was 3, and then k is the y value of that vertex. Now, the next thing we need to find is a. And to find a, we have to look at behaviors of our out and up ideas. So from the point that we are starting at, at our vertex, to the next point out, we have, if we're to reverse engineer a table, our x and f of x, we had the point 3, negative 1, then we go 4, 0, 5, 3, and then the next one would be off the board. It doesn't look like it quite intersects. So how do we move from here to here? Well, that's plus 1. How do we move from here to here? That is plus 4. And looking at our basic table, this is the behavior of 1 squared and 2 squared. So our a value isn't changing anything here. We are simply coming up with 1 times x minus 3 squared minus, uh, yeah, x minus 3 squared minus 1. So if we had moved out in other patterns, it would have shown up as something other than one, a step of 1 and a step of 4. We have the same steps happening on the left side of our axis of symmetry, but that's the joy of the symmetry is it works both ways. Let's take a look at sketching graphs with this. So we're going to sketch the graph now of f of x equals 2x squared. And just to work off it, we're going to build this from a table of values. We have no h and we have no k here, so we're going to be starting at the origin, at 0, 0. Then, because our a value is 2, we have x and we have 2x squared. We start with 0, 0. If we plug in 1, we'll have 1 squared, which is 1, times 2 is 2. And then if we plug in 2, we have 2 squared, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, and that is just barely off the top of our graph. However, because of the symmetry, we are also going to have a negative 1, 2, and a negative 2, 8, giving us this parabola here. To give you an idea, the red graph is a standard 
uh, we'll say g of x equals x squared. You can tell that the f of x is a taller graph. It has been stretched vertically, and that is the job of a. Now what happens with our h and k values? That's going to be a little bit different. So here we have a large series of activities, and each one is simply playing around with a different h or different k. So we're going to go through and graph. The first in each line is our standard graph, as such. Now, in order to start graphing the next one, we need to think what does it take to make it inside the group 0. So for n of x, we have x minus 2 squared. So what would it take to make it inside that group 0? And that is having a positive 2 value. So positive 2, because that's what it takes to make inside of our group 0, becomes our new 0. And then we follow the same behaviors. We'll move out 1 and up 1 out in both directions, 1 and up 1, then out 2 in both directions and up 4, and we simply end up with the exact same graph we had for m of x shifted to the right twice. That is called a horizontal translation. Now for o of x, what would it take to make inside the group 0? And that is a negative 3. So if we plug in a negative 3, we get 0, 0 squared is 0. Then what happens if we plug in a negative 2? Well, negative 2 plus 3 is a positive 1. Positive 1 squared is 1. And we get the same point on the other side. What happens if we plug in a negative 1? Well, we get positive 2 squared, which is 4. And we'll get the same thing if we use negative 5. So we have the exact same graph that we did before, simply translated to the left three spaces. For our p of x line, we're going to be looking at something different. Inside of our group for q of x, it still takes 0 to make 0, but then if we plug in 0, we get 0 squared plus 2, and we have 2. Now, we're going to plug in 1. 1 minus 0 is 1, squared is 1, plus 2 is 3. And same point on the other side. Then if we plug in 2, we'll get 4 squared, which is, uh, sorry, 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2, will give us 6, and same thing for negative 2. So this ends up being the same graph we had before, but it's been shifted up 2 units. And similar idea for r of x, we're simply going to be shifted down 5 units, but our behaviors will be the same. And this one will actually allow us to go a little bit further. We can go out reasonably three steps and move it. So our h inside of the parentheses will move us left and right, just what does it take to make inside there zero. And our k outside the parentheses will move us up or down, because if zero is squared, we are simply adding to it. One last thing here, let's sketch the graph of negative 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 3. And let's do it using the rules. So we're going to start our axis of symmetry. So what does it take to make inside of this group 0? And that is 1, so our axis of symmetry is located there. Our vertex is going to be located on that axis of symmetry at the value of k, so at 1, 3. Now our a value is a negative 2, so that means normally we would move out 1 and up 1. Now we're going to be moving out 1 and down 2 because we have that negative 2 multiplier. So from our vertex, we move out 1, down 2 to the right, out 1 and down 2 to the left. Then we would move 2 and 4. Now we're going to move 2 and negative 8, because that is 4 times negative 2. So we're going to end up here and he here based on symmetry. And then all we do is play connect the dots. So it's a quick sketch. Once you know the rules, it doesn't take much to get it going. Review this. There are a lot of rules and vocabulary here. And be ready to ask questions as you move forward and work on building on these ideas.